It is December 25th, 2021, and a new window to the hidden secrets of the cosmos is opening for experts. About six months after the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, the complex equipment provided us with the first overwhelming images. But this was only the prelude to an ambitious mission, at the end of which our knowledge of the universe will be lifted into completely new spheres. In addition to studying the first luminous formations and galaxies that emerged after the Big Bang, Webb's mission will also help provide the answer to one of the oldest questions in human history. Are we alone? To get to the bottom of this cosmic mystery, the $10 billion telescope will look at the atmospheres of exoplanets and check the celestial bodies for habitability. In this regard, the mysterious signal recently detected is becoming a particular focus of discussion. But what are these current headlines that tell of artificial lights on Proxima Centauri b really all about? Is it truly the technical signature of an advanced species? Or can the reports be explained in another way? Together with you, we're looking for answers today. Excited about the groundbreaking discoveries and fascinating spectacles in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click the bell for regular updates on these exciting topics. Go ahead and show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. Proxima Centauri b It's a question that's probably as old as humanity itself. Are we alone in the universe? Given the countless entities that sparkle down at us from the firmament, is it even possible that Earth is the only celestial body that harbors life? The problem? Although researchers have now succeeded in detecting more than 5,100 exoplanets in nearly 3,800 systems, such a sensational find is still a long ways off. Not only have we not yet been able to prove the existence of extraterrestrial life, in fact, we do not know of any planet other than Earth that can be categorized without doubt as habitable. Often the enormous distances gaping between us and the extrasolar worlds represent a substantial complication for more exact analysis. However, things are somewhat different for our closest cosmic neighbor. No other exoplanet comes as close to our terrestrial home as Proxima Centauri b. Although there are just 4.2 light years between us and this celestial body, its presence was only detected in the summer of 2016. Using the radial velocity method, the assumption quickly arose that the experts had encountered a cosmic twin of Earth in the course of their discovery. And it's indeed true that the exoplanet orbits its namesake host star Proxima Centauri within the habitable zone. As a reminder, in the world of astronomers, the habitable zone is the distance between a celestial body and its parent star in which water can exist in a permanently liquid form. And it's well known that the presence of liquid water is a fundamental prerequisite for the development of Earth-like life. On the so-called Earth Similarity Index, Proxima Centauri b reaches a value of 0.87. As this official designation already reveals, the ESI indicates how similar another celestial body is to our Earth. But does this mean that life is possible on Proxima Centauri b, or that it has already developed there? Well, according to our current state of knowledge, this question cannot be answered so easily because we simply know too little about our extrasolar neighbor. What is certain is that recent spectrographic analyses indicate that Proxima Centauri b has about 1.17 Earth masses. In addition, it can be concluded that the celestial body has a bound rotation, which means that it always turns one and the same side towards its central star. This circumstance would mean that the exoplanet is divided into two areas that differ drastically from each other. The day side, which is constantly illuminated, would therefore be significantly hotter than the opposite night side, which is plunged in constant darkness. The equilibrium temperature of the planet is estimated to be minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit. But even this value is anything but set in stone. If the celestial body has a dense atmosphere, its surface temperature would be significantly higher due to the natural greenhouse effect. Also, the report that Proxima Centauri b could host liquid water has to be classified correctly. The orbital parameters and atmospheric composition that led to this exciting result in a simulation may not match the actual reality. Mysterious Signal As just mentioned, Proxima Centauri b 
probably divides into a scorching hot day side and a bone-chillingly cold night side. However, this spatial division does not mean that the existence of life on the extrasolar world is categorically excluded. Between the two areas of extremes would lie a narrow band in which temperatures prevail that could pave the way for the development of life. And possibly the hypothetical inhabitants, just like us, managed to evolve over time from simple, single-celled organisms to a highly developed species. If this is indeed the case, such a civilization would have to have left traces on its homeland, traces that we can also perceive from our terrestrial vantage point. And indeed, in December 2020, a stunning discovery was announced that some experts interpret as just that, an artificially generated radio signal, the source of the mysterious signal, could be located in the realms of Proxima Centauri. Originally, the researchers had dedicated themselves to the task of examining the host star for signs of flares. With the help of the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia, the experts wanted to find out what effects these radiation bursts have on the surrounding planets. During the evaluation of the data, which had been collected over a period of 26 hours, Shane Smith, an intern with the SETI program, came across a conspicuous signal with a frequency of exactly 982.002 MHz. Since then, this so-called Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, or BLC1 for short, has been considered an official candidate for an artificially generated radio signal from an extraterrestrial species. But that's not all. In the same period, other experts also came across a conspicuous feature in the Proxima Centauri system. The experts detected a bright, long-lasting optical flare there, which was accompanied by a series of intense, coherent radio bursts. However, the fact that BLC-1 does not currently rise above the status of an exciting candidate is due to the fact that scientists have not yet been able to classify the background of the signal beyond doubt. To prove that BLC-1 is indeed the technical signature of an extraterrestrial species, further observations are imperative, but astronomers have not yet succeeded in detecting the signal again. As a result, another origin, such as a satellite or natural source, cannot be ruled out. Artificial lights? Let us assume that life on Proxima Centauri b has indeed succeeded in blossoming in the form of a technically advanced civilization. Against this background, it would not be far-fetched that the exoplanet's inhabitants devoted themselves over time to the task of illuminating the pitch-black night side of their homeland world with artificial lights. The fact that the discovery of such a techno-signature is currently repeatedly associated with the future use of the James Webb Telescope is primarily due to the comments of Avi Loeb, the Israeli physicist has been searching for new ways to uncover the presence of our previously invisible neighbors for quite some time. In doing so, the expert does not shy away from unconventional paths. Accordingly, Loeb stated in 2018 that the mysterious Oumuamua missile could actually be the solar sail of an extraterrestrial species. Together with Eliza Tabor of Stanford University, the Harvard professor published a study titled Detectability of Artificial Light on Proxima Centauri b. In it, the scientists assume that the hypothetical species on the exoplanet uses a type of light similar to our terrestrial LEDs. The result? If the artificially illuminated night side reached 5% of the brightness of the day side, Webb could prove this fact with 85% probability. The principle here is that the more intense the artificial illumination, the higher the chances that it will be detected by our new eye in space. If the brightness of the night side were to level off at 9%, the probability of detection would be 95%. At first glance, an illuminance of just 5% doesn't sound like much. But unfortunately, this is a fallacy. For comparison, the artificial illumination of our blue home planet is only 0.001% of the reflected sunlight. In other words, this means that the artificial lights on Proxima Centauri b would have to be 500 times brighter than their terrestrial counterparts for us to recognize them as such. It's possible that the hypothetical inhabitants of the exoplanet have already provided us 
with some practical assistance in this regard. To reflect the host star's light onto the night side of the celestial body, the inhabitants could use dazzlingly bright orbital mirrors, which could also be seen by our telescopes. As exciting as the thoughts published in the study may be, we should remember that it is nothing but pure theory. At least for now, it remains to be seen whether the expert's theses might have a kernel of truth after all. Should Webb one day actually prove an artificial light signature on Proxima Centauri b, you can be sure that we will tell you about it here. Rohan Naidu's Incredible Discovery Rohan Naidu is a junior astronomer at the famed University of Harvard. The evening that would change everything for this young man was ordinary at first. Naidu had spent a beautiful day with his girlfriend and had just arrived home when his computer reported something incredible. He had developed a very special algorithm that he used to examine the first image published by NASA. Using mathematical formulas, the program searched for the oldest light in the data from the deep field image. Images taken of the cosmos always show light that has traveled through the vastness of space to reach us. Light that has been traveling to us for six billion years shows us the imprint of a world as it looked six billion years ago. The closer an object is to the Earth, the younger the light is, and the closer to the present, the existence and the position of the celestial body is. The deep field image shows us therefore not only celestial bodies, but represents also a view into the past. The oldest objects or light rays on this image are red, the somewhat younger and closer ones are orange, then come yellow spots and finally blue or white ones. Naidu's algorithm looked for the red spots and there especially for the oldest light rays. On that history-making evening in July 2022, the program reported finding a galaxy that became known as Glass Z13 and made the world of science tremble. The Impossible Galaxy it was clear that a new era would dawn with the James Webb Telescope. That's what the researchers hoped for. With James Webb, they hoped to get closer to the Big Bang than ever before. The telescope's output goes back about 13.5 billion years, and the Big Bang is said to have occurred 13.8 billion years ago. It was clear that James Webb's scope couldn't quite see all the way to the Big Bang, but would have to be pretty darn close to that event. With Glass Z13, a ready and on top of it very luminous galaxy appeared, which already existed at a time in which, according to previous assumptions, when there should have been only single stars, which slowly came together to galaxies. Therefore, something was not right. Glass Z13's age was estimated at 13.4 billion years. Thus, this galaxy already existed 400 years after the Big Bang. Physicists and astronomers calculated that the universe originated from a single starting point. With an event that we know today as the Big Bang, the total potential concentrated at one point began its unfolding. The ideas and models about this process were very exact. Already in the first second after the Big Bang, the four fundamental forces of strong interaction, weak interaction, electromagnetic interaction, and gravitation were formed. The universe was a hot and dense primordial soup in which primordial particles occurred in a chaotic state. Within the first three minutes, however, the universe must have cooled down already so far that the primeval forms of helium and hydrogen were formed. But only after 400,000 years, the universe was cool enough to form elementary particles capable of bonding. According to these models, the first stars appeared 150 million years after the Big Bang. These first stars are said to have been true giants of helium and hydrogen, and their lifetimes were probably very short. Such giant stars of the so-called third generation attached themselves sometimes to gigantic structures, which were formed by dark matter, and thus, first proto-galaxies or gas clusters are supposed to have developed. Only when heavy elements appeared in space, stars gained mass and thus gravitational forces. Thanks to gravity, proto-galaxies merged with large galaxies, and over a period of about one billion years, the globular clusters, spiral-arm galaxies, or disk galaxies, may have formed galaxies as we know them today. With the discovery of Glass C13, this model was abruptly destroyed. Because a galaxy of this mass, this order, and luminosity should not have existed 400 million years after the Big Bang. Initially, there was still hope that Naidu's algorithm was wrong, but not all researchers hoped for an error, because the Big Bang theory has meanwhile also many opponents. More and more indications, or even proof, 
speak to the fact that our universe is structured in truth completely differently and also its beginnings were different than assumed so far. Shortly after Naidu's discovery, new galaxies appeared almost daily and they became older and older. Glass C-13 was therefore not an isolated case, but only one of many. Proponents of the Big Bang Theory have experienced one or two sleepless nights since last summer. Everything they had believed in so far could now prove to be wrong. The Mystery of Dark Matter Reconstructions of the beginning of the cosmos are based, to a large extent, on realizations of exotic physics. This is precisely where some researchers see the problem. This branch of astrophysics deals with dark matter or negative matter, and from exactly these forces, we know up to now only very little. About the interactions and feedback between starlight, gas, and dust, there were so far more theories and hardly founded knowledge. Somehow, the assumptions and calculations fit together until James Webb came along. Actually, this branch of physics also hoped to finally learn more about the phenomena underlying the Big Bang and the beginnings of the universe by looking through the telescope to the cosmic dawn. Now these researchers had to realize that James Webb had provided them with quite different food for thought. In short, the results mean that the Big Bang never existed at all, that it took place at a different time than previously assumed, or that the processes of the beginning of the universe took place completely differently than scientists imagined and calculated so far. Soon, still another galaxy appeared at the edge of the universe known so far, which turned previous assumptions completely on their head. Seer 1749 became known as the Schrodinger Galaxy. This galaxy is also one of the oldest and not a Big Bang conform galaxy. But Sears 1749 has another special feature. The galaxy is in a direct cosmic environment in which the surrounding celestial bodies show an age which does not fit to Sears 1749. This galaxy had already existed 200 million years after the supposed Big Bang and seems to be somehow also from another time. Are red light shift errors to blame? The appearance of the enigmatic Schrodinger's galaxy, which got its nickname from the quantum experiment Schrodinger's cat, cast doubt on the accuracy of previous measurement methods. At present, the measuring methods are checked worldwide, but so far, it looks as if the measuring methods are correct. And in the meantime, even older galaxies have appeared. Red shift is the shift of spectral lines to longer wavelengths as an object moves farther away. In astronomy, the red shift is denoted by a dimensionless quantity z. z equals zero corresponds to the present. If the value increases for objects in deep space, their distance and our look-back time also increase. Hubble was able to find a single galaxy with a redshift of 11. Redshift 11 tells us that this galaxy is 13.4 billion years old. The Big Bang is said to have occurred 13.8 billion years ago. For a long time, the galaxy discovered by Hubble was considered the oldest, and now Webb brings to light dozens of other and even older galaxies. The oldest galaxies discovered in the meantime have incredible values of 20z. Long-term observations with the Atacama Large Millimeter Array or the ALMA telescope in Chile could confirm Webb's data in the meantime. Currently, Astronomers are desperately trying to fit Webb's observations into various cosmological models. Only time will tell if they will succeed. The findings are still too recent to draw definite conclusions. It all began with a mistake. A first image of this type actually came about through a mistake in 1995. U.S. astronomer Robert Williams had a Hubble contingent that year that he could use for himself and his work. The astronomer decided to point the telescope at a comparatively empty spot in the constellation of the Big Dipper. That Hubble's observing time was scarce, expensive, and in hot demand. Researchers worldwide shook their heads at how Williams let a quasi-empty space in the cosmos be studied by the world's most expensive and best telescope. Hubble took 10 consecutive days of images. Experts predicted that this observation would reveal at best a handful of faint galaxies, and Williams was on the verge of losing his job because of his extravagant request. But then, the miracle happened. Due to the lack of luminous stars and galaxies in the foreground, light from much older stars and galaxies came through in the image. The Hubble Deep Field showed that the supposedly empty spot was filled with thousands of galaxies up to 12 billion years old. For the first time, researchers saw so far into space, and a whole new way of observing the cosmos was born. 
It was then that researchers came up with the idea of constructing a new telescope. With a new space telescope, they wanted to look even deeper into space, and even further back in time. Well, that has been achieved today, less than 30 years later, and we are only at the beginning of the James Webb mission. So it will remain exciting, and we can be curious what secrets the telescope will still reveal. The View to the Edge of Space One thing is certain, James Webb looks deeper into the universe than any other telescope to date. Thanks to a 21-foot mirror with 18 honeycomb-shaped segments, James Webb can capture light that has been traveling to us for more than 13 billion years. The 69 by 46-foot telescope is packed with high-tech, state-of-the-art instrumentation. According to NASA, the telescope's infrared sensors are so sensitive to infrared light that even the slight warmth of a bumblebee at the distance of the moon can be detected. As a result, this telescope will eclipse anything that has been technically possible. James Webb is considered 100 times more sensitive and powerful than the Hubble Space Telescope. The mission motto could be sharper, deeper, wider, and in doing so, the technology delivers vastly improved color imaging compared to Hubble. James Webb is not just a telescope, but something like a gigantic time machine. Our universe is said to be about 14 billion years old, and Webb can safely capture light that has been traveling to us for 13.5 billion years. Thus, this giant looks to the edge of time. Although Hubble has already been a revolutionizer in space exploration, the old telescope couldn't look quite as deep, and the images Hubble could provide of the oldest galaxies were comparatively fuzzy and blurry. Unlike Hubble, the new telescope is also located much deeper in space. Hubble, to date, is located at a distance of 342 miles. James Webb, on the other hand, is positioned a full 900,000 miles from Earth in space. That is more than four times as far away as the Moon. For NASA and all the nations involved in building the telescope, this represents a significant risk. Hubble has had to be repaired and upgraded five times during its 30 years of operation. To do this, NASA Space Shuttle missions flew virtually to our cosmic front door and fixed it. James Webb is too far away to fly to. Repair missions could be a challenge to the development of modern space flight. NASA long ago discontinued its space shuttle program due to technical defects. The only spacecraft currently carrying humans into space are the Dragon shuttles from SpaceX and Elon Musk. Of course, if SpaceX flies humans to Mars as planned, starting in the 2030s, they could stop by James Webb and change a few light bulbs. We now look at what James Webb has shocked the world of science with. The Oldest Objects Even on the first picture NASA presented to the world public, things were to be seen which should not exist at all. The deep field picture shows in reddish coloring the oldest galaxies of the universe known so far. Here, first investigations provided for an unexpected sensation because the oldest galaxies are to all appearances much older than assumed so far. Scientists must now come to terms with the fact that ready, massive and luminous galaxies already existed 200 million years after the Big Bang. At the moment, international expert teams are examining the authenticity of these findings and looking at whether there could have been perhaps an error with the past determination of distances and the age of galaxies. If the accuracy of the measurement methods is confirmed, all theories about the Big Bang will have to be rewritten and researchers may soon have to find new explanations for the beginning of the universe and time. At the top of the list of the probably oldest galaxies are currently the galaxy Glass Z13 with an age of 13.5 billion years and the galaxy Sears 93316, which could be even a tad older. Remember, the Big Bang should be about 13.7 billion years ago. And after the Big Bang, there was supposedly nothing for a very long time. But Webb's pictures show something else. Are there exoplanets with life? The second sensation that NASA published was only a few days ago. On January 11th, the space agency announced observational data collected as early as August 2022. Detecting exoplanets is one of the telescope's major tasks. Like no other before it, James Webb can sense tiny planets at incredible distances 
as they pass in front of their stars, or the telescope analyzes minute changes in the star's light spectrum to determine the presence of planets. On top of all this, the telescope is equipped with instruments that, for the first time, allow it to make the finest measurements in the vicinity of exoplanets. The determination of a planet's composition and any atmosphere can thus be examined in greater detail. The first planet analyzed in this way was LHS 475b, a rocky, Earth-sized exoplanet orbiting a red dwarf star about 41 light-years away in the constellation Octans. The planet is much closer to its star than Earth is to it, and a year lasts only two days on LHS 475b. By analyzing the transmission spectrum, scientists are now trying to determine what is present in the planet's atmosphere. In doing so, James Webb proved that it can easily detect a whole range of molecules. So far, the data have not been sufficiently analyzed to say for sure that LHS 475b has an atmosphere and possibly the conditions for life. But again, the first successful measurement was only the starting point, and we can look forward to more sensational results. The Search for the Edge of the Universe does the universe have a beginning, an end, and boundaries? James Webb is intended to do no less than finally clarify these essential questions of mankind. In practical terms, the telescope can look back in time 13.5 billion years. That should be to shortly after the Big Bang. It remains to be seen whether James Webb's scope can look back even further than previously thought. As we've already told you, the telescope has already turned the world of science upside down with the first images of extremely old galaxies. If researchers have found evidence of the Big Bang thanks to James Webb, at least the starting point would have been confirmed. But this is not so, and also, no hints were found on boundaries of the universe, which existed shortly after the Big Bang. In this context, of course, the question immediately arises whether James Webb can theoretically look to the edge of the currently existing universe. However, this question must be answered quite clearly with no. James Webb can only capture light and make sources visible. The light that hits the telescope's mirrors has been traveling in the cosmos for a different amount of time before it reached us. The image that James Webb records thanks to the light always shows the position of the light where it was at the moment it was emitted. Galaxies whose light reaches us after 13 billion years very probably do not exist today. Even the light of our nearest stellar neighbors in the Centauri system takes about four years to reach us. We then see the stars as they looked four years ago. So, since we have practically zero possibilities to look from Earth into the existing universe at the moment, we can't see to an edge either. As we know today, not only galaxies move in an expanding way through space, but the whole space expands. The starting point was supposedly the Big Bang, which is now under scrutiny, a previously unexplained factor in the overall structure of the universe, and its expansion is black or dark matter. Here too, James Webb is expected to provide new insights. However, the first measurements on this are still pending. The results could be the much-needed pieces of the puzzle of the overall cosmic picture, or once again terrify the world of science. Dark matter is very likely an essential building block of the universe. It's the original ground of a not less mysterious network which forms the basic structures of the universe. That there is dark matter is clear. It only escapes all physical rules known up to now, and it's exactly this that provides for sleepless nights for scientists. What if everything astronomers and physicists thought they knew about the cosmos is wrong? If the telescope continues to deliver results that do not fit the previous theories, we will be able to experience in the coming months and years how the history of the origin of the universe will have to be completely rewritten. What do we really know about the cosmos? What we know and know for sure at the moment is the size of the universe known so far. This is the part of the cosmos that we can observe with telescopes. However, we currently have absolutely no way of estimating how large the universe actually is. James Webb's observation radius is 13.5 billion light years. The total size of the known cosmos is about 28.5 gigaparsecs. Parsec is a so-called astronomical unit, shortened as AE, for cosmic distance specifications. One astronomical unit corresponds to the distance between Sun and Earth, or about 90,000 million miles. 
One parsec corresponds to 3.6 light years, or 5,880,000,000 miles. So 28.5 gigaparsecs would put us at about 58 billion miles, and we humans can hardly imagine that spatially. So far, researchers assume that we on Earth can only see light up to a distance of 16 billion years. Researchers call this line the event horizon. What happened before that, we humans will probably never know, unless our technologies make dramatic progress. But researchers are confident that they can reconstruct events thanks to computer simulations. To do so, constants within known space must be available, and that's what James Webb is finally expected to provide. At this point, many questions remain unanswered. Will we finally find traces of life on other planets? Can we unravel the mystery of black matter? And will we find the edge of the universe? You tell us what you think about these questions. Did you firmly believe in the Big Bang Theory and are now shocked? Or are you one of the few people who can actually imagine an infinite universe? Revolutionary Insights in media coverage, the James Webb Telescope is often dubbed a replacement for Hubble. But if the views of NASA's leading experts are anything to go by, the term scientific successor is far more accurate. After all, many of the research goals that Webb is currently addressing and will address in future years were inspired and made possible in the first place by the results delivered by Hubble. In order to add to the revolutionary body of knowledge that Hubble's use has revealed to us, it seemed only logical to develop a successor specifically designed for infrared astronomy. This is because the light of far distant and thus also early areas of the cosmos is shifted into the near infrared due to the cosmological red shift. With its unprecedented technical precision, the James Webb Telescope allows us to catch glimpses of those first luminous objects and galaxies that emerged after the birth of the universe and the so-called Dark Ages. Furthermore, the $10 billion instrument looks deeper than ever into the mysterious world of stellar cradles, analyzing the chemical and atmospheric compositions of extrasolar planets in unprecedented detail. A look at the following images shows the breathtaking developments that telescope-based space exploration has already made in the past. Although the images produced by WISE, Spitzer, and Webb depict one and the same region of the sky, they could not be more different in terms of quality and detail. While the WISE image shows nothing more than a blurry collection of coarse points of light, we can at least make out something like individual structures on the Spitzer image. What Webb captured for us finally shows us the sky in its true glory. On the much sharper image, we see countless sparkling shapes and complex cloud structures that we could not even guess at in the previous images. A star cradle in comparison. A look at the Carina Nebula also shows what the often cited dawn of a new research chapter is all about visually. Located in the constellation Keel of the Ship and about 9,000 light years away from us, the colossal structure has a reach of up to 300 light years. In detail, the Carina Nebula embodies one of the most significant stellar cradles in the Milky Way. And yet, a brief comparison between the Hubble and Webb images reveals how many sparkling secrets once lay hidden behind the dense clouds of dust and gas. In fact, many of the objects that Webb captured in the infrared were completely invisible in the previous images. How a Star is Formed Speaking of cosmic star cradles, it's worth taking a look at the stunning image Webb made of a protostar in dark cloud L1527. Basically, Stars are born when a cloud of dust and gas collapses under the weight of its own gravity. As a result, the matter in the center is compressed to such an extent that the molecular hydrogen decays to atoms. The protostar that is created in the course of this process already glows, but it still has too little mass to ignite the fusion of hydrogen. This is not possible until the stellar baby accretes enough additional material and become sufficiently dense. This is a development that is currently still in full swing in the protostar, which is about 100,000 years old. In detail, this can be seen in the form of a bright spot 
slumbering in the center of the hourglass-shaped structure. Consisting of gas and dust, the stellar cocoon reveals to us in infrared light where particles and gases ejected from the protostar collide with the surrounding material. Just like human babies, the stellar infant burps from time to time. These present themselves as bubble-like objects in the upper part of the hourglass and are the result of shock fronts of hot hydrogen gas. Breakthrough in Planetary Research it's probably the central question of our time. Are we alone in the universe? Anyone who takes a closer look at this exciting topic is inevitably confronted with another question. Is Earth the only celestial body in the cosmos that harbors life, or at least provides the necessary conditions for it? To study an exoplanet in terms of its potential habitability, it is essential to decipher the exact nature of its atmosphere. Only in this way is it possible for us to make statements about the friendliness or hostility to life forms on other celestial bodies. And indeed, the James Webb Telescope should now reach an absolute milestone in this respect. With the help of the collected spectral data, the experts were able to analyze the atmosphere of an exoplanet more precisely than ever before. This was an astronomical sensation that Webb's predecessors had not been able to achieve due to their technical limitations. This is now a thing of the past, thanks to Webb's near-spec spectrograph and the nearest instrument. As soon as a planet apparently passes its host star, the atoms and molecules of the atmosphere perpetuate telltale absorption lines in the light spectrum. The gas giant WASP-39b, about 700 light-years away, shows us how revealing the investigation of such transit signatures can be, since this planetary colossus exceeds the size of the mighty Jupiter by a factor of 1.3. The decoding of its gas envelope proved to be particularly revealing. In addition to the previously recorded carbon dioxide and water deposits, Webb's instruments also revealed the presence of sodium, potassium, and carbon monoxide. In the same breath, it was revealed that the planet's atmosphere does not appear to contain methane, a fact in which WASP-39b differs significantly from some of the gas giants in our home system. Particularly interesting, in the acquired spectra, the experts detected an absorption line that initially could not be placed in a known context. The comparison with models then provided the insight that we are dealing here with a trace of a molecule that has never before been observed on an exoplanet, sulfur dioxide. Findings and Outlook This conclusion is especially significant because sulfur is commonly found on gas giants, mainly as hydrogen sulfide, and because it can give us clues about the extrasolar world's formation history. Accordingly, the surprisingly high sulfur dioxide content, combined with the ratios of other elements to oxygen, suggests that the atmosphere of WASP-39b contains up to 30 times more heavy elements than the Sun. The low volatile element content should also not be ignored here. From our current models, gas giants are formed by the collapse of dense gas assemblies in protoplanetary disks. The high proportion of light elements serves as an indication of this formation background. However, However, the matter is somewhat different in the case of enrichment with solids. As a result of the obtained information, therefore, it's concluded that the extrasolar gas planet was probably formed in a similar way as Jupiter and Saturn. Initially, a solid planetary nucleus formed before massive amounts of gas were accreted as a result of the accreting gravity. The data provided by Webb mark nothing less than a major turning point in exoplanet research. Accordingly, they provide us with completely new insights into the evolution, chemistry, and physics of alien cosmic worlds, and will possibly help to prove the existence of extraterrestrial life in the future. Looking back As mentioned earlier, however, deciphering extrasolar planets is just one of several exciting research goals. Webb has been given on its journey through space. The question of the origins and characteristics of the universe's first stars and galaxies has also kept scientists spellbound for some time. The first images already confirm that Webb achieves the task with flying colors. Researchers identified several formations that could be the oldest known galaxies of all. With a redshift of 13.1, the galaxy candidate 
Glass Z-13 might have seen the cosmic light of day 300 million years after the Big Bang. The problem is that detailed spectral data are essential to verify the age and nature of galactic candidates. In fact, supposedly ancient galaxies may turn out to be much younger stellar assemblages in analysis. While we lack the relevant data in the past, they have now been collected and revealed for the first time in Webb's history. The Space Telescope provided the spectral data of 250 old galaxies. The result? Four of the studied constructs have a particularly high redshift. The oldest of all investigated galaxies has the scientific designation Jades GS Z13-0, and it existed 13.5 billion years ago. In addition, some characteristics of the early galaxies have already been determined. They were relatively small assemblies, whose star formation rate was about 1 to 2 solar masses per year. But also in this case, it has to be said that the unveiling of this early universe has just begun. The experts have already discovered several more primordial galaxy candidates that need to be analyzed spectroscopically in the near future. James Webb's Search for the Beginnings of Space The mission of the largest and most expensive space telescope ever has several goals. In addition to detecting exoplanets and exploring our nearest cosmic neighbors, we continue to search for the beginning and end of space, or traces of the Big Bang. Thanks to the finest infrared measurement techniques, the James Webb Telescope can peer even further into space than its predecessor, the Hubble Telescope, and above all, deliver even sharper images. Right at the start, the James Webb Telescope made a discovery that could overturn previously accepted cosmological theories and completely change the world of astrophysics. The Oldest Galaxies in the Universe This deep field image was among the first images NASA shared with international research teams and many enthusiastic people on Earth. On display are countless galaxies and clusters of galaxies in addition to stars in our immediate cosmic neighborhood. Of course, astronomers immediately took advantage of the new observing distance James Webb had achieved and eagerly peered deeper into space than ever before. In the weeks that followed, reports overflowed regarding the oldest galaxy so close to the Big Bang that we humans may even soon find clues to the beginning of the creation of the universe. Researchers measure the distance and the age of the galaxies over the so-called redshift, as well as over the speed of light. The bright or bluish lights in this image are celestial bodies that are comparatively close to Earth. Their light was only traveling for a few or hundreds of years until it hit the observation mirrors of the James Webb Telescope. The red points of light, on the other hand, are galaxies several million to billions of light years away. Despite the new technologies of the super telescope, even these galaxies can be seen only as slightly blurry figments. But this image shows much more than stars and galaxies. It's also a glimpse into the past. If the light from a star takes 10 years to reach us, we can see the position of the star 10 years ago in images like these. Accordingly, in the case of red galaxies, we see the position where the galaxies were several million to billions of years ago. Whether the red galaxies still exist today and where they are exactly in space is impossible to observe on Earth because we only see the light and not the objects themselves. But it's precisely this glimpse into the past that is so exciting for researchers. They hope to be able to see back to the beginning of the universe and to the Big Bang. This is thought to have happened about 13.8 billion years ago. The new space telescope was designed precisely so that it can see as close as possible to the presumed beginning of time. Highly sensitive infrared measurement techniques allow new detailed analyses of distances as well as the mass and luminosity of the oldest galaxies in the universe. And it's here that the researchers made discoveries that raise many new questions and could forever change previously held cosmological ideas. The Discovery of Sears 1749 Since 2015, the record holder in the hunt for the oldest galaxies in the universe has been the galaxy GNZ 11, discovered by Hubble. GNZ 11 is about 13.4 billion years old and has only 4% of the size of the Milky Way. According to the Big Bang Theory, GN Z11 would have formed about 400 million years after the Big Bang. 
The age of the galaxies is given by the redshift value, which is abbreviated in physics to a small z. The redshift has to do with the propagation of light in space. As you saw in the deep field image, certain filtering techniques used by the James Webb cameras make nearby objects appear bright and distant ones appear reddish. To find out more details about a reddish and distant galaxy, researchers analyze certain patterns and shifts in the color light spectrum. These patterns allow conclusions to be drawn about how bright, old, and distant a galaxy is from us. The larger the redshift, the greater the distance of the object and the earlier the object was present in the cosmos. The galaxy GN Z11 reached a value of 11.1 Z. Hubble could not see further with its measuring instruments. All the more pleasing to the world of science that James Webb can now theoretically detect galaxies with values up to 20 Z. That such galaxies exist at all was doubted by many astronomers. Previously accepted theories assumed that several million years after the Big Bang, there was not much more in space than dust, gases, and motion. When the first stars and galaxies formed was still a mystery, but it's precisely this fact that can now be better illuminated and seems to call into question everything previously assumed. In 2015, the discovery of GN Z11 had already triggered a small revolution. Because this galaxy already existed 400 million years after the Big Bang, and researchers had not considered that possible up to this time, the astronomers were all the more surprised now that the James Webb picture shows many galaxies with redshift values of 13 or 14 Z and more. It was thus clear that James Webb would fully meet all expectations and provide astronomers with revolutionary data. But even before the experts could start studying the newly discovered galaxies, astronomers from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland topped everything. They announced that they had found a galaxy with the incredible value of 17z. The value would mean that this galaxy had a redshift of 17z or more. The value would mean that this galaxy already existed 220 million years after the Big Bang. The galaxy which first got the designation Sears 93316, and later the slightly different name Sears 1749, shows in addition to its unusual age, further peculiarities, which do not fit into the old ideas of science. Large Mass Besides the unusual age, Sears 1749 has a huge mass, which means that there are a lot of stars in the galaxy. So the oldest galaxy in the universe is anything but a small, puny cluster of stars that might have formed shortly after the Big Bang. With 5 billion solar masses, Sears 1749 is about 5 times heavier and more massive than our Milky Way, and much larger than any other galaxy in its immediate vicinity. Extreme Brightness Sears 1749 also exhibits enormous luminosity. The galaxy's brightness of negative 22 move is actually much too high for a galaxy that existed 220 million years after the Big Bang. Unusual Shape At a great distance, it's very difficult to make exact statements about the shape and nature of the galaxy, Sears 1749. Nevertheless, it could be that this unusual phenomenon is a main and a satellite galaxy, or two merging galaxies. But also, these appearances do not fit cosmologically and physically so far into the period of 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. However, with it, we are not yet at the end of the unusualness of this galaxy. The actual fact that turns everything else on its head is yet to come. Schrodinger's Galaxy while the value of scarcely 17z has been confirmed in the meantime, astronomers began to examine the galaxies in the direct environment of Sears 1749. In the process, values came out that absolutely no longer fit into the previous picture of the universe. The cosmic neighbors, namely, only attain z values of approximately 5. These are galaxies which should be far younger and closer than Sears 1749. But how can it be that these objects are spatially in the direct vicinity of a much older and theoretically substantially farther away galaxy? This circumstance earned the unusual phenomenon the nickname Schrodinger's Galaxy. Schrodinger was an Austrian physicist who dealt with quantum laws. Quanta have the property of being in two or more places and times at the same time. 
much like Sears 1749, appears to be. Schrodinger's cat is a famous thought experiment that states that, in the world of quanta, a cat can be dead and alive at the same time, until it is observed by a human with a certain expectation. So with Sears 1749, the question now is whether the observing people are seeing something that the galaxy really is not, or whether it is indeed an object that will change the astronomical textbooks of this world. What can the galaxy mean? Edinburgh researchers have expressed scientific caution so far. Under previous assumptions, it's impossible for a galaxy with the luminosity and mass of Sears 1749 to have formed so soon after the Big Bang. Practically, this means that either the theory of the Big Bang is not true, or that the nature of our universe is after all quite different from what has been assumed so far. We hazard some small thought experiments. The Big Bang is a theory which has not been confirmed so far. Researchers calculated about 100 years ago, then known values back to an assumed starting time of the universe. But the new data question not only the beginning of the universe in a single bang or event, but also the data on which the Big 